In my high school, every single student there gets a standard iPad. And this is mine. I didn't know how to hold it up without making it look extremely awkward. I'll put it down. And of course, when you're in school, you have to take notes. And the common note-taking app amongst pretty much every single person at my school is GoodNotes. And to give credit where due, GoodNotes is better than most note-taking apps out there. For example, Apple Notes, Microsoft OneNote, GoodReader, Evernote. But recently, I asked my school to put Notability on the iPads, and they did. I've been using it every day, and frankly, I love it. And so therefore, here are 25 benefits of Notability over GoodNotes. And by the way, I'm basing these points off of the premium versions of the two platforms. Okay, here we go. Number one, a tree organization method. In Notability, all your subjects and dividers are stored in this left sidebar, and it's easy to open up all your dividers and flick between your different subjects to quickly find what you're looking for. GoodNotes, on the other hand, doesn't use this method of organization, and so you're just left slowly clicking through folder and folder and folder, and the animations aren't fast either. Number two, more color options for subjects. In Notability, when you go to choose the color for a subject, you have many different colors to choose from and many shades of those colors. In GoodNotes, it's just a few colors and sometimes it's not the one you're looking for. Like someone, please tell me, why can't there just be a normal blue? I have to choose between teal or blurple, none of which I want. Okay, now this topic has been passionately voiced by Reddit users. Number three, ability to password lock a subject. In both Apple Notes and OneNote, you have the ability to lock a note behind a password. And of course, entering that password will unlock the note. And for some reason, GoodNotes does not have that feature at all. It's completely missing. Notability kind of adds the feature. In Notability, you don't have the option to just lock a single note wherever it is, but you do have the option to password lock a whole subject. One way you can get around this is just by taking a bunch of notes you want to lock and putting them in a specific subject, but hey, at least you can get around it with Notability. That's not possible with GoodNotes. Number four, the Recents tab. In Notability, if you go to the Notes section, there's a tab labeled Recent Notes that does exactly what it says so. It shows you every note from every subject that you have that's been modified recently. I don't know why, but again, GoodNotes doesn't have it. Okay, now we're actually getting into editing notes. Number five, a more compact action bar. In GoodNotes, you have a tab bar followed by another bar that separates the actions of the main action bar. Whereas in Notability, it's just much simpler. In a single line, you've got a tiny back button, your main action bar, and other options. And you can even stow away tools from that main action bar that you don't really need to make it even more compact. Number six, moving the main action bar. In GoodNotes, you only have the option to have your action bar at the top or the bottom of the screen, whereas in Notability, you can take your main action bar and also drag it to the left or the right. Okay, this one's really important. Text functions are consistent between text boxes and the paragraph text editor. Okay, just look at this. So in GoodNotes, why is it that if I go into the paragraph text editor, there is a clear option to create a numbered list and a bulleted list, but when I go into a text box, that option just doesn't exist on screen anymore, and I have to rely on my keyboard. Why? What is stopping you? Would it really be that hard to add two extra buttons? And it gets even more flabbergasting, because in GoodNotes, if you're in a text box, you can change the font to whatever you'd like, right? I mean, that's just a simple function. But the minute you go into the paragraph text editor, that option doesn't exist. You can't change the font. It's just so stupid. It's so idiotic. Okay, let's lighten things up with the tape function. In Notability, when you're in a note, you'll see this button, and that button is called the tape button. With the tape function, if you drag your finger or your stylus anywhere over the note, it'll tape that up. But clicking on the tape acts as a toggle to hide and show what's behind it. This can act as a sort of flashcard substitute if you're studying for a test with an answer key and you want to cover up the answers before you've already got one in mind. And then you can just click and show the answer. Number nine, the ruler's marker points. In Notability, if you click on the ruler and then you click on a writing utensil, you'll see these two little arrows, which you can move to adjust the length of the line that you want to draw. But hold on, when I do that, the line just disappears in front of my eyes. Well, the good thing is, if you double tap any part of the ruler, that line will automatically draw for you. This is great for any sort of precise work in Notability. Number 10, the eraser has more granular control. 
In good notes, the supplied eraser has three sizing options, but in notability, you have 12 sizing options. So you can either go wild with your eraser size, or you can go teeny tiny tiny tiny. Number 11, notability actually has a proper pencil. Like, you know, when you write with it, it looks like you're writing with a pencil on screen. I mean, even Apple Notes has it, and once again, Good Notes doesn't. Number 12, duplicates of certain tools. Let's say that there are two pens that you like to use frequently, but at different times, a black pen and a red pen. In Notability, you can add two pens so that they can both show up in your action bar, and you can easily switch between them. Number 13, Notability has a beefy in note sidebar. So let's say you're in a note. If you swipe over from the left side of the screen, your sidebar will pop up. Over here, you can see your subjects and your recent notes. Of course, you can just tap that note to open it, but you can also drag that note to place it alongside the note you're already working on. But now the way Notability does it is it places these two notes in a single window. So what this means is that even if you have two notes open in a Notability window, you can also add another Split View app on the side. So I can have my class notes, I can have my homework, and I can have my music all running at the same time. Or if you really want to step up productivity, add another Notability note in that Split View section. And so now you have not one, not two, but three notes running at the same time. Number 14, easy switching from a freeform lasso tool to a box lasso tool. So let's say you have the freeform lasso tool selected. If you start using it and then you hold, it'll switch to a box lasso tool, which you can use to select an object and then resize it. Pretty intuitive. Okay, moving on to number 15, Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus. Okay, but seriously, number 15, an extra page is always added. In pretty much any note in Notability, you'll always notice that there's an extra page that you just cannot delete. This is intentional. The extra page is always added, so you can just keep on writing and writing and writing and writing without having to think about adding a new page. Number 16, I really resonate with this one. Any picture has the option to get rounded corners. Simply on any image, tap the three dots and say rounded corners. And it instantly looks more aesthetically pleasing. Number 17, no watermark on free and education accounts. When GoodNotes was updated to version 6, what they did for the free and education accounts for GoodNotes is they started adding little watermarks in the bottom left of every single PDF exported. And it has seriously pissed me off. I think you can understand why. Notability simply doesn't do that. Number 18, the quick export option for PDFs. With this option, you minimize a couple of steps. You just click the three dots and you click quick export, and then you can share it to wherever you want. In GoodNotes, you have to click share, export all, customize your settings for the PDF, then click export all, and only then do you get to share wherever you want to. Number 19, a better auto backup feature. With the auto backup feature that GoodNotes has, it was pretty unreliable and didn't add notes to the cloud quick enough. And with Notability, it's blazing fast. In like 10 seconds, the note is instantly added to the cloud. For better or for worse. Number 20, a version history feature that actually works. For every note that you work on, Notability is automatically backing up a version of that note every single minute to iCloud. So God forbid something happens to your note, you can restore it to its previous state. Number 21, can you do some for me? Again, seriously, number 21, different theme choices. In Notability, you've got your standard light and dark themes, but you've also got dark blue, jet black, and then you got other custom ones like spring, winter, Halloween, pretty fun. In Notability, you get an endless supply of stock templates and community-made templates. At least speaking from the education plan, GoodNotes charges you. Okay, this one's pretty sick. Night mode for the actual note. So we all know how unsatisfying it is when you're in the dark, you're using your device, and then just a bunch of white pixels scream at your face. But if you're in the dark, Notability has a night mode toggle, which will smartly shift all the colors to ease your eyes. What I really wish though is that Notability would add like an automatic night mode. I mean, Apple Books already has it. If you go into a space that's pretty dark, Apple Books will automatically change the book you're reading to dark mode. Okay, 24, the eraser erases the highlighter before erasing anything else. So if let's say you first start writing with your pen and then you write with a highlighter over it, 
when you go to erase that area, it'll first erase only the highlighter, and then, once you start erasing again, it'll erase your pen. This means you don't have to keep hitting a toggle to erase the highlighter only. And finally, number 25, this isn't there in the free version, but audio transcriptions. If you start recording audio in Notability, it will automatically generate a transcript of whatever was said. And so you don't have to keep scrubbing through, let's say, an hour of audio to find the part you were looking for. So that was all 25 benefits of Notability. But there are two caveats that I think are really important to point out. Number one, availability. GoodNotes, in addition to being available on the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac, is also available on Android, Windows, and the web. And so this means that GoodNotes will fit in many more households, whereas Notability is just available on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And number two, price. Oh dear. GoodNotes costs $10 a year or $30 for a one-time payment, and you can share that purchase with six different people because of family sharing. Notability, on the other hand, costs $15 a year with no one-time payment option, and it's only for one person. And so, yeah, that's it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and also comment down below what you thought, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!